Hello. How is everyone Hello. today? Well, how is your day 39? Good. Breakfast is good. Breakfast is good. That's good. <laughs> All right, we'll now bring in our jury. Andrew, Zucker, Mackenzie, Lauren, John, John, Jim, Greg, and Austin voted out the last tribal council. Alex, Lily, and Simmons, congratulations. You are the final three and you have made it to day 39. Welcome to final tribal council. Before we leave tonight, a winner of Survivor Exile Island will be determined. The three of you have made it to a point that 13 others have not quite been able to get to. How do you feel right now? Alex, we'll start with you. How do I feel? Well, um, I, yeah, I'm a combination of very excited and very nervous. Um, I... I just, I'm thrilled to be here with Lily and Mike. Uh, we had a great time together playing this game. I'm super excited for the chance to uh, explain why I should be the winner of this season. Uh, I am ready to rumble. Simmons. I'm definitely a little nervous. Um, you know, I know some of these questions are probably going to be a little loaded, but, you know, because that's all great jury members over there, a lot of great players. I'm excited for tonight. You know, I get to see a lot of faces that I haven't seen in weeks, um, but definitely nervous, excited, all of it. It's it, I'm grateful right now. Great boy. I think that word showed up a lot at the last tribal council too. Interesting. And Lily. I'm overwhelmed. Um, like Alex and Mike said, I'm excited to be here. Um, I'm nervous as I'll get out because I don't know what to expect because again, the people on the jury are smart and um, they already know what's going on. So <laughs> just really excited to see everyone again, grateful to be here, lucky to be in the final three, lucky to be next to Alex and Simmons. So a lot of, you know, very basic adjectives, but it's all jumbled into one body right now. Well, Lily, you mentioned expectations. And it's funny that you say that mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. all Morgan and I said was that you earned your spot at final tribal council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just like every member of the jury has. Before a winner is crowned this evening, one of you will become the ninth and final yeah. member of our jury. Only two of you will have a chance to plead your case as to why you should hold the title of sole survivor. Which means that tonight, for the last time, immunity is back up for grabs. The winner of this final challenge will advance to the final two and make the ultimate decision of who to bring with them and who to send to the jury. So with that being said, are you guys ready to get to your final immunity challenge? While Survivor <laughs> is a game about strategy, finding idols and making good moves, it is ultimately a game of social politics and building relationships. Whoa. So for tonight's challenge, we are going to see who knows the jury the best. Oh, we asked the jury. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> we asked the jury several questions about themselves, where they're from, what they do for work, among other things. You three will now be asked 15 questions about the jury based on those responses. If you get a question right, you earn a point. The person who has the most points at the end will win immunity. For immunity, for the last time. Your first question. Where did Greg go to college? This is a fat owl for me. 
Craig, I love you, buddy. Are we supposed to put the university or the location? Not that I know either, but the name of the school that (laughs) Craig went to. Latitude and longitude. (laughs) Exact coordinates. We are looking for the name of the school. Hold up your answers in three, two, one. I said Stevenson, if you can read that. I know you want uh, None of you have the correct answer. <laughs> the correct answer is George Washington University. Uh, all, right. all right, off to a stellar start. It's the it's the long game survivor. We were dehydrated. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're like full from the breakfast still. Uh, Man, I thought I was giving you guys like a kind of a softball for the first question. I think I would have rather have gone for like an actual <laughs> challenge. Number two, what two jurors have a sister named Taylor? Looking for two jurors' names. Terrible. Three, two, one, repeat. There is one correct answer. Simmons got it right. The correct answer is Kenzie and Liz. Nice. Simmons, one point. Question three, what is Zucker's wife's name and how long have they been married? All right, let's see your answers. Okay, Zucker's wife's name is Amanda Uh and they have been married for five months. So you all failed miserably at that. Sorry, apologize to her for us. <laughs> I'm sorry, Amanda, when you're watching yeah. this. We are still uh, Simmons with one point, Lily with zero, and Alex with zero. All right. Which jury member plays the French horn? Let's see the answers. The correct answer is John. Lily, got it. <laughs> You just look like you play it, John. That's a compliment, by the way. <laughs> and, uh, fittingly, uh, John has a picture of a French horn behind him. Oh, <laughs> I don't even know that's. <laughs> I thought the French horn was like, I guess that's a trumpet, huh? Mm. Austin was throwing me off with the dang bow tie down there. Oh. Like he came straight from a concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have Lily and Simmons with one point each, Alex still at zero. Here we go with question number five. Where did Andrew travel to when he said he had the greatest summer of his life? Let's see your answers. For Canada. Lily says Canada, Simmons says New York, Alex says Mexico. None of you are right. The correct answer is Australia. <sighs> Jim has two kids. What are their names? Go ahead and reveal. Well, I don't have no girls. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Jim has two boys. Their names are Andrew and Jace. Andrew. Question seven. What is Austin's college degree in? All right, let's see your answers. I don't think I spelled it right, but I put psychology. Psychology is incorrect. Both Simmons and Alex say education, specifically social studies, which is correct. Simmons and Alex both earn a point. Simmons currently in the lead with two, Lily and Alex each with one. Question number eight. What accomplishment did Greg say he is most proud of? Show him. I put work theater related, that he like worked in a really big play in college is what it was meant to be. Everyone is incorrect. Greg's answer was coming out as gay to myself and my friends and family. The score is still Simmons 
two, Alex one, Lily one. Question nine. What does Jim do for his full-time job? Let's see your answers. Mechanic. That's what I call oh, it. I knew that. Um, Jim is a assembly tech. I don't know if uh, we can accept mechanic. Let's ask Jim. Jim, do you accept mechanic? Absolutely. Okay. That is the correct answer. Lily and yeah. Alex both got it right. We asked the jury what person on the cast is who they bonded with the most. Which person's name was the most common answer? To clarify, this is a name of a person on the jury. Let's see it. I put Mackenzie. Thank you. Oh, Greg. I also said Greg. Correct answer is Mackenzie. Ah, Lily got it thank right. Thank you all. <laughs> Lily with three, Alex and Simmons with two. All right, we have five questions to go. Which juror said their favorite food and beverage was tacos and a nice cold beer? All right, let's see what you got. I put Greg. All right, Lily says Greg, Simon says Andrew, Alex says Austin. One of you is correct. The answer is Austin. Alex scores a point. Alex and Lily with three, Simmons with two. Question 12, in feet and inches, how tall is Lauren Pratt? Go ahead. I put five two. Damn. The five Alex, three. Alex and Lily beating around the bush. The answer is five uh, three. Dang. Uh. Three questions to go. In what city and state does Zucker live? Let's uh, see what you got. Um, that's not the answer I have, but I don't know, uh, New York geography at all, so. I, I'll accept that answer, but I don't think it makes a difference because everyone said the same thing. So yeah, that, that's, that's fair. <laughs> we'll take the points. <laughs> all right, all right everybody gets a point. <laughs> <laughs> the answer was, was great, great answer neck, by the way, if you're watching. Okay, question 14. This one is for two points. What two sports does John play? Each sport is worth one point. All right, go ahead. Okay, the correct answer was curling and hockey. Lily and Mike both got a point. Lily in the lead with five and Mike and Alex with four each. So here's where we stand. We have one question to go. If Lily gets this question correct, she will win immunity. Uh, if Lily does not get this question correct and Alex or Simmons do, we will have a tie. And then Ian and I will have to come up with some more questions. <laughs> okay, last question. How old is Andrew? All right, let's see what you guys got. I put 29, almost 30. The correct answer is 29. I got Lily, it. congratulations. You have won immunity, guaranteeing yourself a spot in the final two. Thank you. I still feel like an asshole, but thank you. <laughs> which means Lily, you now have the, I guess you could call it opportunity to choose who you want to sit at the end with. And I think being that it is day 39, Alex and Mike both deserve a chance to speak up 
and explain why they believe they should sit at the end with you. So Alex, we will start with you. Lily, I, I told you before this, I, I think you've got this wrapped up. Um, I, I, you know, if whatever, you know this game, girl, you know what you need to do. It's up to you. I love you no matter what. Uh, if you vote me out, I don't care. I mean, I do care, but like, I will not hold against you. You do what you need to do. Simmons? I mean, basically, you know, you got to do what you got to do. No hard feelings either way. Um, you know, pleading my case a little bit. You know, we've been on the same tribe the entire game. I know Alex has been the same way too, so it's it's tough. Um, you know, whatever you decide, you decide. I'm not going to sit here and, and say one thing and throw Alex under the bus or say something and throw anybody under the bus. So whatever you decide, you decide. And, you know, I respect your decision. So I really didn't think that I would win the last challenge. So I made a final two with both boys, which in hindsight was not a good decision. Um, Cause now I just feel like a grade A asshole because I have to choose one of them. Um, I mean, it's hard because like on one hand they both deserve it, but like Simmons won four challenges. He like worked his ass off to get here, but also like he worked his ass off. So can I beat him? Damn. Thought I felt like crap before. Okay. I'm voting who I'm voting out, right? Four, mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, I hate to do it. I'll do a tally the vote. Once the vote is read, decision is final. Person voted out will be asked to leave the tribal council area immediately and then come back immediately. I will read the vote. Fifteenth person voted out of Survivor Exile Island and the ninth and final member of our jury. Simmons. Simmons, the tribe has spoken. Sorry, Simmons. Okay. Well, Alex, Lily, the two of you have gone as far as you can go in this game. The power now shifts to the jury where they will ultimately make the final decision of who will hold the title of sole survivor. I'll be honest right now, I'm, I'm pretty crushed. Uh, you know, spending all day kind of practicing what I was gonna say and think about what kind of questions people are gonna ask. And I actually thought I had a good chance to win tonight. Um, you know, that was the only vote I received all game and, and that just, that sucks. Um, it's an emotional roller coaster the entire game. And, you know, I'm the reason Lily's even here tonight, right? Like I could have voted her out last time, like if I wanted to, but you know, I understand the decision. It's an easy win for her now. No one's gonna vote for Alex, sorry, but you know, I guess I understand. The over overall experience, I didn't even expect to be here, you know, starting at the game. I was just hoping to maybe make the merge. I went on a little bit of a run, had a lot of fun. So shout out to everybody that made this happen. I enjoyed it and um, I guess that's it. Well, now that we officially have our final two, we will proceed in traditional survivor fashion. Each of the final two will have a chance to make an opening statement. Then each juror will have the chance to address one or both of you. We will do conclusions and then we will vote. Lily, kick us off.
with your opening statement? Um, so I had a completely different <laughs> opening statement um, before this. I think that, I'm sorry, I'm just like very overwhelmed. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. I have um, played this game, as you can see, with a lot of emotion. <laughs> Normally I get a couple minutes after I vote somebody out. Um, I've cried for each of you, John, you got a nice little duo cry. <laughs> um, because I think you guys are all really strong players. And I think I knew that when I got to the merge and when Andrew got voted out and I knew that I had to lean on my intuition and I was gonna have to vote out some people that I really liked and people that I worked with. And I think I've done that well. I think I've known when I can trust someone and when I can't and how to play with the numbers. You know, I'm just one person. I can never push one vote, but it's a way of convincing people that we have a strong way to go when it's the best for everybody's game. Um, I've kept big people in this game as a shield, you know, no, my name never really came up because I was always somebody that was perceived to be sliding by. But I think a lot of you guys know that I've been in those strategic conversations. I've held my own and challenges, not that I've won one until now, but you know, I wasn't always the first person voted out, even though I joked about it, you know, I was able to use advantages or my advantage well. Um, so I'm, I hope that you guys have been able to see that or that I'm able to show that with the questions that you ask and our conversations moving forward. Alex. I didn't cry about any of you. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, you know, this game is really tricky, right? And I... I first ask, I guess, for you as the jury to not, even though I not understand the concept of perception is reality, right? What you guys believe to be true based on what you've seen is what's true. But I ask that you uh, hear myself and Lily out and um, understand the games we played. I feel like we were both quite underestimated at a lot of this game. Um, so I just ask for open minds and uh, I will respect what your vote is. Uh, moving on to my game, you know, I, from the get-go, I put myself in a really comfortable spot had a final five and a final four within that. Um, and then obviously things got tougher. You know, once the merge hit, I made a few social blunders and that caused me to be a target for a few rounds. Um, but, you know, I was adaptable and I bounced back from that. I was able to, you know, use different relationships throughout the game uh, with people who weren't in my core four, people like John, to vote out big targets like McKenzie, right? And once McKenzie was out, from that point, every person that I wanted to go home went home. I flipped votes. I flipped the vote from Austin to Jim because I knew Austin wanted to take me to the end. And I knew that he'd be much more likely to vote out Greg than Jim would be. I wasn't really sure where Jim's head was at. You know, I once we got down to final seven, every person wanted me at the end with them. And while that may be seen as like, oh, well, because Alex didn't do it, like he might be seen as a goat. I credit that to myself playing up how much of a non entity I was in this game. Like, Oh, the guy, he got so upset when his name came up, he couldn't control his emotion. Yeah, that sure. And maybe that was a little, there was a little bit of truth with that, but I definitely also played up like how young I am, how stupid I might be. Like I make decisions based on emotion. I knew what I was doing and I hope I can prove that to you guys tonight that I did know what I was doing every step of the way. Almost every time I went to vote, I knew exactly what was happening. I knew who was going home and I knew how they were going to go home. I learned and like I can see there. It was true. I mean, like I said, every person I wanted to go home besides the Andrew and Zucker votes went home. And, um, you know, I'm sitting here, uh, at, like as Lily said, uh, you know, I'm excited for your guys' questions. Um, and I, you know, I respect your decision, whatever it may be. Greg, go ahead and get us started. Okay, so I have to modify this a little bit from what I've prepared, but I do have something prepared. Um, hi, Lily. Hi, Alex. It's nice to finally talk to you guys after a couple of days apart. Um, I've missed you guys. Um, and I also, I guess, want to start off by saying shout out to Mike. Mike, you played a fantastic game. It's great to kind of be able to talk to you here a little bit or hear, hear your voice a little bit here. Um, you should be really proud of the game you played, Mike. 
Um, on to the final two, because the two of you deserve to be sitting where you are. You both earned your spot in the final two, and I'm excited to hear you both plead your cases throughout the night for why you deserve to win. Um, I hope you're proud of yourselves for the games that you've played because you're the only two out of 16 to make it to the place where you are now. And that's a great accomplishment on a season with unexpected twists and some serious game players. I'm truly proud of each of you for making it this far. And I'm fortunate to call both of you, my friends. Um, and as much as I really wanted to be in one of those seats, it warms my heart to know that I get to vote for one of you to be the winner of the game and that an OG Phil and a glam member is going to walk away with the W. Sorry, Mackenzie, you saw that. Uh, but I'm wearing the red to represent Phil tonight. All right, uh, enough with the pleasantries. It's time to get down to business. My vote is not predetermined, and both of you have a chance to earn it tonight. My vote will be one of my vote will not be awarded solely based on the answers to my questions, but your collective performance in the game and your responses to the questions my jury peers send your way tonight. And before I get into questions, I wanna give you my opinion on what I think you need to do to highlight why you deserve a win. Generally, the two of you made near identical strategic decisions at tribal councils. So you'll need to explain your thought process behind those decisions and how it sets you apart from the person sitting next to you. Lily. You are as sweet as a honeysuckle and as gentle as a butterfly landing on a flower petal. You, are, you arguably had the best social game of the season, and I think you proved that with that last challenge. But do not rest on those laurels. You won't win by being the most likable. A lot of us are interested in seeing a more cunning side of Lily tonight. Alex. You wear your emotions on your sleeve and have a sarcastic sense of humor that I really, really enjoy. You are arguably the underdog coming into tonight. And I think that was the case with the final three as well. I think your gameplay was more visible up close to people who played very close with you than those who viewed it from a distance. So I think you need to very clearly enunciate your game decisions and fight for it. In Survivor and in life, I have a strong appreciation for self-awareness. Some have it, some don't. My question for the two of you is this. At what point or points did you realize you were perceived a certain way and how did you change or embrace that perception? Alex, you'll go first. Yeah, so, you know, I... I wouldn't say I coasted through the pre-merge, but only having go to that first tribal, it was smooth sailing, you know, um, didn't really have to make a lot of hard strategic decisions. And then in the early merges, um, I actually was informed by multiple sources that people um, didn't appreciate the way I had talked to them, um, the way I came off in one-on-one -on -one conversations. And that, uh, you know, I, I know in my real life, I you know, while I am most of the time very loose and outgoing and free, yes, I can be quite emotional and I can probably talk with a little more bite than I would, uh, would I, that I would like. So that was a little, it was a little uh, upsetting to me to hear that these people did not appreciate the way I talked to them. And so, you know, I did what I could to apologize and just let them know it was not personal and like to just I, because just as a person, I don't want anyone to not like the way I talk to them, right? Um, and in particular, it was something Lauren said about how I yelled at her and couldn't control my emotions after I found out I was not included in the Zucker plan. And like I said in my opening statement, while I was upset that I came off that way to her, I also knew by perhaps playing up the fact how erratic I would become if my name was tossed out um, and how easy of a vote I might be to get out. I knew I could maybe use that to perhaps to fade into the background and pull some strings from behind a little bit behind the scenes. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like, you know, after those first two rounds, I was never really brought up as a serious target again. And I think part of that is due to sure people not seeing me as a big threat, but I think what people failed to understand is that I had a lot of strategic pull and even social pull. I mean, even though I may, I'm probably not seen as, I'm definitely not seen as as good of a social player as Lily, you know, I, I 
people were coming to me every time my name was brought up. I knew when I knew when votes were coming my way. I knew where pe other people's plans were going. Right. I had I built really solid relationships with Lily and Mike and you, Greg, and to the point where I was never I was never blindsided by my name coming up. It was more so where it happened in the game. Right. I was told very last minute about the Zucker vote. And so, you know, uh, I'm talking in circles a bit, but I will end with saying, yes, I used a negative trait about myself in a little bit of a way to kind of put myself maybe as seen as sort of not a good social player, someone easy to take out. And I was able to ride that wave a bit. So I was under the radar and able to pull strings. Lily. Hey, Greg, beautiful speech, by the way. Um, yeah, I think things really changed early on for me was exactly um, the Andrew vote, you know, I came into the merge and people saw me as someone that was going to be someone that coasted by someone that wasn't a strong player that didn't have big ties that they could pull on their side or give them a little bit of information, you know, and then they'll stick by you. Um, and so instead of trying to fight it, because as much as I hate to be seen as that weak, you know, I've, I've been told many times, well, not many times, but I've been told by a couple people that I've been called a weak girl. I don't know what's going on in the game. Um, you know, I'm just riding the coast. I've been told that those things were said into me, said about me. So I leaned into it. Uh, in real life, I do act like this, but I know when to stand my ground. But I knew that in this game, standing my ground would make me the next person to go. So I knew how to stroke people's egos to make them think that they're making the big moves. I played the girl that couldn't really play, even though I got second place in three challenges, I was never seen as somebody that was gonna win at the end at the final three. And that's the reason why I got here over Austin. You know what I mean? So it's precisely because I was self-aware because I was intuitive of what was going on on top of making those social connections where these people felt comfortable telling me, you know, your name's not coming up, but this is what they're saying. That's even more vital than knowing that your name's coming up because you can adjust that to your game. So I think the self-awareness really hit me with Andrew's vote because I was left out of that. You know, I was one of the three people that wasn't brought into that vote because I wasn't seen as a number that was needed. So I made sure after that vote, even if I didn't agree to it, it was, I had to be a number that needed to be in there. And I think I proved that which every, with every vote going out. Great. That answers my question. Thank you both. Good luck. Thank you, Greg. Mackenzie, you're up. Hey. Okay. So I came in here. I'm going to be completely honest, like almost positive that my vote was going to go to the one um, in particular person. Um, but Alex, I was really impressed by your opening speech. So you may actually be able to change my mind here. Um, Going off what Greg said, Lily, you were really blunt with me at points and like super, super honest. And I know there's some people here today that don't think that you owned up to your moves and your game. And so I just hope that you can channel the same blunt energy you had in your one-on-one -on -one conversations with me with everyone else so that they, you know, buy it. Cause you straight up told me you were not going to go to the end with me. Like you, you made no, you made me not a single promise. You were like, I would never want to sit at the end with you. And I really appreciated that about you. What have you learned about yourself playing this game? And how do you think playing org changed you as a person, if at all? Um, yeah, I can take that one first. Uh, Mackenzie, I do want to say, I knew I could be blunt with you. Whereas with other people, we didn't have the relationship where I could be blunt. So if people feel that way, um, it's cause I knew if I was blunt, I was next. Um, but you know, this org has really changed me. Um, I pretend like I had a little exile moment. Um, cause the first week I was really just out for myself. I was saying whatever needed to be said. Um, you know, and I think that this game has given me an appreciation for having the opportunities to be blunt and honest and for the community that it's kind of given me. I think that you know, even though I joke that I've cried after every time I voted out, it's because I continually felt like I didn't deserve to be in the game compared to the person that got voted out. And I think that really started to change the further I got along because I felt like, you know, I am proving myself and that I'm able to keep myself in the game for certain reasons. So I think that, you know, on the outside world, I can give myself a little bit more um, self-assurance as I've needed in this game, a little bit more of a mental backbone, you know, behind the scenes. So I think that's what's really changed for me and to be a part of this community that 
I had no idea was here. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both, bitch. <laughs> um, ditto on finding, you know, a bunch of awesome people that I also enjoy Survivor. I've spent many years now just being kind of in my own personal little cup, go into my room and watch Survivor and just think about Survivor. But now it's nice to like, just being able to talk to people about the game and strategy. And um, in terms of personal, how this changed me, um, you know, change is a very strong word, right? But I've noticed, you know, I'm currently about to uh, finish my junior college. I have one year left and I'm out to the real world. Um, and I, even though, though I am, I seemingly confident and, you know, uh, I was going to say obnoxious, maybe that might be the right word, but like very energetic. I, I tend to underestimate myself a lot. I have a lot of self-doubt about my abilities as uh, uh, not only an uh, actor, but a person as well. Um, and yeah, so there were like a couple, there were points in this game where, yeah, it looked really down for me. I looked, I, I even like these last couple of votes, I I kept telling myself, you're not, you're not going to win. Like, there's no way you can win. But I think like, if anything, being able to do so well, even if it just means making it here, being able to do so well in a game I've like a game I've loved for so long. And like, you know, you always wonder, right. When you're watching the show, like, man, like how well would I actually do? Like, would I just be first out? And like, even though this is very, a very different style from the uh, actual show, it's does give me a little self-validation that I, you know, I can excel in this area, you know? And like, even if I lose tonight, I can, I can go home happy knowing I played a good game and, I can tell myself I played a game. I don't need to, I don't, even though I'd love validation from my peers, I don't need it. Cause I know deep down I've done a good job. Thanks. Good luck to you both. Thanks Mackenzie. Thank you. Jim, you're up. Hi Alex and Lily. Congratulations. You too. Thanks Jim. Um, actually Ian and Morgan actually th stole my thunder too. Cause I was going to actually ask, you questions about me, but now I can't really do that because you know a little bit more about me. Um, so um, the person I'm going to vote for is still available for me to vote for. I'm not going to say who that is, obviously. Um, I was just going to make a statement after that, um, you know, ask personal questions about each other. But Alex, I know I want to ask you a question because you made a statement that um, – during the Austin gym vote, or when you voted me out over Austin, you said you didn't know where my head is. But in the breakout room, just before you voted me out, I pulled you and Lily aside and told you where my head was at. I Maybe you don't remember. Um, I told you that I was going to, I asked if you, you know, take you guys to the final three and Greg had to be dealt with. And you said that you didn't know where my feeling is on Greg was. Do you not remember that or no? Or you just oh. didn't believe me? No, I, I definitely remember that conversation, Jim. You, you hit us with that right before the vote. Um, um, the issue for me was that it, that was so last minute, right? And I, I obviously, because we voted right after the challenge, but yeah. you had never once brought it up in like the actual scope of the game. It was like when you knew your back was against the wall, you brought it up, right? Whereas Austin had wanted... Uh, the me my, me him and Mike to go to the end for a while and even though that's not what my actual intentions were I knew Austin wanted to vote Greg whereas uh I wasn't I just wasn't sure where you're at and I also thought you were and also when it comes down to it I thought you were a bigger jury threat than Austin Jim you're a very likable oh, guy yeah that, that 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 I do understand I thought the reason I thought I got bored out was because there's too many old Alexa on the jury that's why I thought me and Austin were both in trouble so, okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. Good luck. On Millsip, you are up. Well, <clears throat> congratulations, you two. You made it to the end, a feat that 14 of us weren't able to accomplish. But just because you get to the end doesn't mean you're deserving to win. And quite frankly, I don't think either of you are deserving of my vote right now. Alex, you played a game in which people felt like they couldn't connect to you, where they felt that people had that, where people felt that they had no idea whether you were being genuine with them, with the way you presented yourself to them. And when I came back into this game, I told you exactly what you needed to do to win this game. 
I told you who you had to be sitting beside at the end. And neither of the people I told you to be sitting beside are sitting beside you right now. Willie? Early in the game, I felt like we were making a very good personal connection. As the game progressed, it became very clear you were an incredibly duplicitous person. And I don't actually know if I know anything about you because it feels like you just lied to everyone here. So now is your two's chance. Wow me. Why should I vote for you? Because I need to know, how was your game different from the person sitting beside you? Because on the outside looking in, it seems like you just benefited from the big targets going after each other too early. So how did your game differ from the person sitting beside you? Uh, Lily, we'll start with you. Yeah, so um, I can take that. Man, John, you really know how to bring out the anger in people, huh? I think that was your whole point with that speech. Um, you know, I mean, a part of my game was to let you guys duke it out. There's why um, stop it, but I knew the order that I needed people to get out so that I continued to have the numbers. I knew once I lost Zucker, then Alex and Mike would feel more comfortable working with me. I knew once I lost Mackenzie that Lauren would feel more comfortable working with me. I knew when I lost you, John, that I knew Alex and Mike would also continue to feel more comfortable with me. The difference is that with every, I knew every vote who was going home. I was not in on the Andrew vote, but last minute I was informed of information and able to deduce it was Andrew. And I continue to put my vote on Jim because I knew I couldn't give that information up to everybody just yet. I knew who was going out every time. I didn't agree with it. I didn't want Jim to go, but I didn't have the numbers. I didn't want Greg to go, but I didn't have the numbers. The thing is a lot of these big players, they, I was playing with them. I just was never seen to be playing with them. Greg was one of the people that was 100% one of my confidants the entire of this game. I tried so hard to get Greg to stay, but when I know I don't have the numbers, I don't have the numbers. Again, Big threats think that they can push people into the way that they want, but that's not how this game works. You're one vote, you're one person. So if you bully someone into thinking that they need to vote the way they need to vote, then you're the next target. So I use that to my advantage. I was able to have conversations and I do believe my connections with people were real because to be honest, I didn't make many deep connections because I'm an introvert, you know, I'm not good at that. You know, I'm not, I mean, there are people like Austin that I didn't talk to throughout the game because we knew we were never a number for each other and we never wanted to fake it. And so I think there's a part of reality within that game. Of course, I made faults and I'm willing to own up to my faults. You know, I, I probably wasn't truthful to everybody, but when I saw a chance, I tried to take it. And when I saw those connections, I took it, you know, but I don't have a connection with everybody. And I know that that's something I was battling up against, but I think that that's where my differences are. You know, I'm willing to admit the votes didn't go my way all the time, but I knew they were going and I knew where they were going and I was a number when I knew I needed to be one. Thank you. Yeah, uh, John, thanks for the statement and the question. Um, I think the difference, I mean, that answer actually helps me inform what the difference between mine and Lily's game was. I was, I was willing to lie to people and tell them what they wanted to hear, right? And even though it sucks is a personal thing, and I, I hate to hear that I didn't come off genuine a lot when I definitely tried to make some genuine connections, but I wanted to make i wanted to make moves the whole post merge of the game when we i found out last minute right zucker was going home i knew they were splitting the votes between myself and zucker in some capacity i had myself lily greg and mike on the line i said we have four votes that's a majority right now because they're splitting if you guys don't follow the plan we can vote mckenzie we can vote john we can vote whoever we want we can do it right now they weren't willing to do that they wanted to play it safe and vote zucker unfortunately zucker went home and then from that point on, like I, you know, Lily said she couldn't get her way. I got my way. We argued, not argued, but we discussed a lot. Greg versus Mike at final five. Lily wanted to save Greg because I think she thought he would more likely to take her than the end than Mike was. And 
I had to I had to convince her that Mike was going to stay with us. Mike was not going to vote with Austin at the four to four set tie. Keeping Greg in the game would have been a terrible idea. I love you, Greg, but I I I was thinking about Greg going home since final eight, but it didn't it didn't make sense at the Lauren vote, and then he was immune for a couple rounds. So. I knew Greg had to go. If Greg sits here, he wins unanimously against anyone. But I had to make Lily see that. And I had to make Lily understand that, no, Mike was going to vote with us. And I was correct in that assumption. And I think, you know, the, I understand being blunt and telling people the, tr like, the straight up, you know, it's not, it's not good to lie for the sake of lying. But if, you know, if Austin comes at me, throws at me a final three with him and Mike, of course I'm going to say yes. John, if you win, you come to me, say you want to go to the end with me. I'm not going to be like, no, sorry, you're not in my plans. Like I kept my options open. And even though, yeah, I eventually mostly voted with my alliance because that's what made the set made, made sense at every round because making moves for the sake of making moves does is not a legitimate strategy, in my opinion. I was always willing to work with people. Mackenzie, I was even open to working with you. And then I knew you were, it was too, it was too far gone and we were just going at each other. So I knew that was too far gone, but I was honestly willing to work with everyone in this game. And I think that separates me and Lily. I think I kept my options more open and I was able to get my way strategically more of the time. Can I follow that up real quick? Um, I just want to point out, Alex didn't convince me, sorry, Alex, did not convince me to vote Greg. I knew I wouldn't get his way. So again, it's the matter of bringing it to Greg. Greg knew when he was going out before that tribal. You know what I mean? Again, we all decided to bring it to him, but Alex didn't convince me to go Greg. I knew that I didn't have the votes and that's plain and simple. I was smart enough to know when to step down so that other people thought they were making this decision. So then it wasn't me next, it was Austin. If I, if I had come to you and said I would vote Mike, were you gonna vote Mike? I will, yes, I would have voted Mike, but I that knew you- That would not would. have been a good, okay. And that wouldn't have been a good decision. I, but see, I disagree. I think bringing Greg to the end, although everybody thinks, you know, People think Greg would have won. And I agree, Greg probably had a really high chance of winning, but Greg made it so far because there were people there to work with him. I worked with Greg this whole time, knowing that he was a big threat, knowing if we got to the end that he would win, but he was a number for me. You know, we worked together. So I kept him as close and as far as I could, you know, and that's not to say Greg made his own calls, but. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you you might be right. If I was sitting next to Greg, Greg would win. But I wanted to take that gamble. But at the end of the day, I knew I didn't have the numbers. Austin, you're up. Lily, Alex, congratulations to the both of you. Um, you. I would have to say out of everybody here, no offense, you two are probably the ones that I've had the least connections with. And that's not a necessarily jab at either of you that's just i didn't see some points of us being long term now when we got to closer to the end yes obviously i was approached by Wib simmons and alex about being in a final three and i um, get it no one's going to say no to a final three at the end so um and lily i i will admit uh you caught me severely off guard with uh your playing style and I call that impressive, to say the least, because I'm not going to lie. There are times where I said, I'll own up to it right now. I thought that there were very much instances of you not being very good in challenges. I'll own up there, right up here now and say it. And you very much surprised and impressed me. And for that, I give you credit. Uh, my question with this is sort of relation to this. I will say and I will pretend because this relates to the question. I have seen a total of three episodes of Survivor. <laughs> so surprise me if I say this and actually give this question, not as my own, but uh, I had to look up and research and Google for a little bit, but I am going to give the Kim Powers question because as I had to adapt and survive essentially and learn from everyone here about the game of Survivor and how it's played. Who did you learn the most from and why? Um, so I, is that for both of us and you mean in this yeah. game? Okay, yeah. so 
both of you, so Lily, you can go first. Okay, thank you, Austin. Um, that I'm gonna cheat and I'm gonna say there are two people. Um, the first person that I'm gonna say is Mackenzie. I took a page out of her book. Um, you know, she was very good last minute saying, the vote's not gonna go your way, but it's not you and you're safe, you know? And there's value to that and, you know, having that happen to me and then knowing, okay, that's what's happening. So I was able to learn, you know, her styles of working with people and giving them just enough information. So they feel like they can trust her to keep her in this game. That's why she had so many people close to her. So I know I was kind of the, I told all the secrets, but I told the secrets that didn't affect my game, you know, and I told it to certain people in certain ways to make them think that I'm giving you all the information I have. Trust me, give me some back so I can run and tell somebody else, you know, because these secrets don't benefit my game. Um, I will say the second person I learned from is going to be Lauren because she's so smart at this game and she's very timely with what she says and how she says it. And I think that that is a big part of strategic conversations and knowing this is what this person wants. How do I kind of interact with them? How do I get the information out of them to then twist it in a way that's going to benefit me? Because I knew, you know, the things that I could learn for the challenges, you know, those weren't going to benefit me as much as I love going to John and Lauren before the challenge and saying, so like, what do you think this is going to be? And they always knew somehow those brainiacs, but it never helped me, you know, <laughs> that the, those were the big strategic things that I learned from this game on how to continue to keep going and not put as big as a target on my back. I actually have two as well. I'm also going to say Lauren, actually, uh, because even though, like, it was, <laughs> I will say, it was somewhat frustrating working with Lauren at times because, like, she she did play, played a lot of sides, but she was, and we knew this. That's the thing. We we knew this from a very good way into the pre-merge, but she survived a long time, I think, and I think she played a really, like, underrated social game in terms of, like, like, she did go to everyone like she want like even if she knew there was no chance in hell you were working with her she would hit you a bunch of times like with the plan like here's what we're doing let's zoom you know she was I think just her work ethic I'm actually going to say is something that I would take with me if I were to ever play another one of these and the second is Greg um because Greg was in the spot that I wanted to be in in terms of great player solid alliance relationship like he, the, the reason the reason why I was so worried about Greg was because he was so I I was worried about his relationship with Mackenzie and Lauren and Austin right and I he had so much social pull and that's why we all eventually saw him as a target because of his social pull and his but you know even when he knew his name was coming up kept level-headed he kept calm he you know he knew when to give up power he knew when to take power he and that's yeah, obviously as I've talked about something Saying level head is something I wish I would have done more in this game when I would have come up. So those are just a couple. But there's, I mean, to be fair, there's plenty from everyone on the jury stuff I would take with me. Michael Zucker. All right, Lily, Alex, congratulations. Uh, you two did what 14 of us couldn't, and that's make it to the end. So it's a huge accomplishment. You should both be very proud of that. It was not easy balancing this game with our lives. So uh, again, great job um, in general. Um, Having said that, my question now is uh, amongst the nine of us now on the jury, um, I want you to clearly, I want a numerical answer. I want to know who amongst us nine, you feel you have their vote. If, if that number is zero, zero. If that number is all nine of us, say that. If it's something in between, say that. But what I won't stand for is a non-committal answer. Uh, and I don't know, I'm not sure answer, because if you say anything aside from a numerical answer, you will not get my vote. Um, so that is my question is, again, who amongst us do you feel you have their vote and why, and also why? Why do you feel you have our votes? I'm um, looking across the board, I think I have three right now. Uh, and I may be way off, but I'm gonna say uh, John Austin Zucker, uh, sorry, uh, Simmons, sorry. Um, John Austin and Simmons. Um, I hope, you know, I, th I hope I've impressed people tonight that I do didn't know what I was doing. I think I just answered John's question pretty well. I think I answered Austin's question pretty well. And I, I was very close with Simmons. 
on this entire game. Um, who's, you know, I would like more, but I'm going to say three right now. So I'm going to go with a solid zero because I don't think anybody's votes are made up and I have a potential to put a foot in my foot in my mouth. I almost said a foot in my ass. Um, that would be harder. <laughs> but I don't think that anybody, you know, I really can't look at this jury and say, I know someone's voting for me. And, you know, maybe that's issues on myself. Maybe, you know, that's a reflection. But I think that I can't look at this jury and say that there's one or two people that are going to vote for me. I think a lot more people are giving me weird faces, which is making me think that this is different. But I truly believe that a lot of people are struggling to separate Alex's, Alex and I's game. So I think that a lot is still undetermined. Lauren, you're up. What's up, guys? Long time, no see. Been waiting a little bit for this. Of course, you probably already know that. So first off, I do want to say congratulations for making it to the end. It's a really difficult game to play. It was both of y'all's first orgs. So I am proud of you for being able to see you guys sitting there because it is a tough game. It's a lot harder than th people think it is to play. Also want to give a shout out to production as well. Thank you guys for everything that you did for this game. You guys are rock stars, so kudos to you. What I do want to say is everything I am saying has nothing to do with who you are as a person. It has everything to do with your gameplay. So I just want to say is nothing personal about who you are as people. It all is how you were in this game. So going to start there. I do have a question for each of you. However, after that question is done, there's a twist because it is Survivor, shocker. So there'll be something after that. Alex, gonna start with you here, my friend. Listen, we had a brother-sister relationship back and forth. Totally, that's how it was. Understandable, no hard feelings. I do wanna tell you this. You have impressed me a lot tonight. And I have to say, my vote coming in was never determined and it's even like, more clouded now. So with this question, I'm going to ask you, Alex, tell me why Lily played a shittier game than you. Lily, love you, no hard feelings, but I want this win. Um, you know, I, and this, this goes back to a lot of what I said with John. Um, you know, and it starts from the very beginning. I think I started the game playing a bit harder. I, I credit myself for reading people well. I immediately liked Lily, Greg, and Mike as people, and you as well, Lauren. Um, and that's why I wanted to form this group. And I think I was instrumental in the creation of that group, right? Um, and, you know, I felt as we moved along, and Lily and I, you know, we did make most decisions together. You know, we were very on the same page. We talked a lot. Um, I just think I, I feel like I had a much better, like, strategic pull on the game than she did. I felt like you know, like I said, with her, her flat out telling people I wasn't going to vote with you, like we're not going to talk, even though I, I was not, you no, know, one of my biggest regrets in this game, I was not able to have just enough one-on-one -on -one conversations with people once the post-merge hit. That's part game and part just life getting in the way, right? But I feel like in the ones I did have, I was able to at least form a bit of a somewhat working relationship. Like I had, the, I had this thing with Mackenzie and Austin that we both said at the beginning of the merge, with each other like we're not working together right now but we're going to keep our options open and i was willing obviously with mackenzie didn't work out austin we did work together for a boat or two um and i think one of the biggest post-game relationships or post-merged relationships i made was with john whereas lily was very turned off by john wanted really nothing to do with him you know john had to come to me right after the zucker vote he felt we were both on the bottom i thought i i wasn't as much on the bottom as i think he thought but we definitely for a working relationship. And I think, I hope a good personal relationship. And we, you know, not that I'm going to sit here and tell you, I convinced John about Mackenzie, but we made the decision together. You know, I feel like I was able to, he, he didn't trust Greg at, at that final nine. He wasn't sure Greg was going to vote with us. I didn't, I didn't know if he was actually going to follow through with the Mackenzie plan. I think I played a part in telling him and convincing him. Yeah, Greg is with us. Like we have five, we need to pull the trigger. And that was, I think the turning point somewhat of the game because it freed up Jim. Jim no longer wanted anything to do with that side. He was always going to vote John or Lauren. Freed up Austin a bit. Austin didn't really, like, I feel like Austin didn't really know where to go at points. You know, he had to come to people like me and Mike. And it just really opened this game wide for my group of four to take control. And, you know, in 
again, like coming back to versus me versus Lily, I felt like I had much more to do with that decision than she did. And moving forward, you know, you know, I, I felt like I didn't, I felt like, and I, I'm sure she's going to say the same thing. I felt like I didn't need, you know, anyone's approval to move on, you know, in this game, I felt like I could have, I could just make the moves I needed to make, you know, like at eight, I, I pondered at, finally, I pondered the idea of voting Greg because just he was starting to gain momentum as a big threat. And if he had so much social pull, like he was never going to be voted out. But, you know, I felt like I, you know, I felt like if I, I really believe I had pushed Lily and Mike to vote Greg at eight, they would have. And I decided not to, because I felt there was more danger of a John Lauren and Austin trio there that could have controlled the game from that point on. So we didn't pull the trigger. And the, from there on, like I said, I, you know, I, the person I wanted to go home went home. I'm going to again, reiterate the point that, you know, and I know she, I will say, I don't think I did convince her, I guess she's saying that, but she's saying I would like, if I had, I had said I would vote Mike, she would have as well. And that would have been a really bad move, obviously. Um, and I just kept my options open more, you know, like I said, John and Austin both wanted to take me to the end or go with me to the end. Whereas Lily didn't really work with them. And so I just kept my options more open. I had more paths to the end and you know, I, like I said, tonight, I was, I'm, I was not worried about a final challenge because I knew if I win, I obviously go and he, and Lily and Mike would have both picked me. I believe, hope I'm right. Uh, and I, you know, I think I gave myself the most options to get to the end. And I knew even if it meant sacrificing a bit of in-game prowess, like looking like a good player, I knew I could do a good job tonight of explaining to you guys what I actually did. Um, even though that's kind of a risk, I understand, but I felt like, you know, I just felt like I set myself up for much more success. Whereas um, Lily, where Lily did play a great game, I don't want to take anything away from her game. I did, I do feel like Lily, Lily played a little bit more passively and a bit more following other people. Same to Alex. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Lily, <laughs> I've heard you say tonight that you thought a lot of people underestimated you in this game. And I want to get the story straight for you. You were never underestimating this game. I thought you were a badass bitch that was here to play. So just want that to be clear from my end. You were a strong player, so don't underestimate yourself here. However, I do want to say you were definitely a liar, a manipulator, and a backstabber in this game. So my question to you is, what move did you make solely on your own that no one else impacted? Okay. Um, the Zucker vote was really vital for me because even though the four of us could have voted Mackenzie out then and she could have gone, my game, it still would have gone nowhere. I needed Zucker out to leave John open. And I did talk to John a lot after the Zucker vote. I told him that Andrew, you know, we had a one-on-one -on -one and that was true. And I gave that information to John because I wanted to build that connection. Getting rid of Zucker was vital to open up those cases. And I sat there with the four of us and said, I'm not voting McKenzie. I do not want to vote McKenzie because that would have not been the best for my game. The second vote is actually the McKenzie vote. And the ironic part is Greg and I spoke probably until 1.30 a.m., the Zucker vote about getting McKenzie out, about if we flipped it this way, we could get her out. This would be really vital. But I woke up the next day and was like, I can't, I can't do that. And I think Greg did the same, you know, we decided it wasn't the time, but Z Simmons came to us and said, you know, Mackenzie threw out Lily's name and then she threw out Alex's. And so immediately I was like, well, this is the first time my name's been brought up. And in that vote, we were deciding between Lauren and John, you know, her name wasn't out there. So immediately I go straight to let's get Mackenzie out. You know what I mean? I put that word out there. And of course, everybody agreed because I knew people would agree at that moment because she's a big threat. And we had the numbers right there. We just needed John. You know what I mean? And I knew I could trust John for that one vote. And that was it. I knew I couldn't trust John after that vote. You know, all feelings aside, you know what I mean? Like that was a big part of my game, being able to utilize John when I knew that he would vote my way and then knowing he's not going to vote Lauren. So I, I can't tell him if it's Lauren, you know what I mean? Like there are moments where when we talk about who we're bringing into this vote, who's going to be a part of it, you know, the intuitiveness of knowing, yeah, that's not, they're not going to vote this way, or I'll just say what needs to be said now, because if, 
Zucker had voted for McKenzie when he went out, I would have been right after Zucker because I would have lost everybody that I was close to. I would have lost Simmons and I would have lost Alex because they wanted McKenzie gone that vote. And I put my faith, I put my faith and my intuition that Zucker was not voting McKenzie that vote and really pushed it. And, you know, there's already a majority on Zucker. It's got to be Zucker this vote and we'll move forward that way. All right. I appreciate both of your answers. I literally just wanted you to have the ability to own your shit in this game because that is how you get my vote. To the twist, grab your paper and grab your pen. Oh boy. <laughs> You're gonna have 10 seconds to write this down. When I say reveal, that is, you're locked in, that's it. There's no explanation, nothing, you're done. Write down on your piece of paper, who on this jury does not deserve to be on the jury and should not get a vote. Ooh. You got 10 seconds to write a name. This is my twist, everyone gets a vote, but can we you are- we explain it or is it just like- No, no you can only, you're gonna hold up a name. You got 10 seconds to write a name down. Who you do not think on this jury deserves a vote and who should not have made it to the jury. You got 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, reveal. I do this because I don't know your game. <laughs> I didn't want an explanation. Sorry. I, you know I can't help. That's it. No, but that's it. You're done. You guys are done. Put it down. Next person. Congrats. Good luck to you both. Andrew, you are up. Me. I've got notes because I've taken them during jury and uh, during this. So if you guys will excuse me for a second, I'll just go from what just happened. Uh, yeah, I was trying to motion to vote for me so that you wouldn't piss off anyone else. I don't know if that's why you voted for me, but if so, way to go for picking up clues. But if not, thank you. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Well deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> I don't remember whose question it was, but you you did embrace the fact that oh, I'm a kid and I don't know any better and this, that, and the other, and this 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 is fun. I get it. I appreciate it. Um, and, and it worked to your advantage because you're sitting here, Lily. You did say that you embraced the fact that oh yeah, everyone thinks that um this. Yeah, but you took it and ran with it, and now you two are here. I'm a believer that if you sit at the end of the game in Real Survivor or in any of these orgs, you did something to get you there. I don't care what anyone else says. You deserve to be at the end of the game, and I, and I firmly believe that. And if Simmons was sitting there with you guys, I think that I would – I mean, I would definitely say that it was the same thing. You guys deserve to be there, and I, I appreciate the fact that no one – bash you guys for sing, sitting there at the end uh once again going through the notes going through the notes um uh, before i get to my questions thank you guys both for not letting pe people bully you uh i know that some of these questions were very loaded and you guys just went with it and answered the fucking question appreciate it so now i told you both at the beginning of the game or whenever we got swapped with each other that i was going to ask you a question turns out that was a lie uh, kind of a lie. What kind of a lie? Uh, what I usually do is, if there's a final three, I will ask two people to talk about other people in the game, and I ask one person to talk about myself. Because there are only two of you, uh, I've decided that I'm just going to have you guys talk about other people. So we'll start with Alex. Uh, besides what you learned during the challenge, and basic stuff, where they're from, where they went to college, what they do. Um, tell me about Lauren. Uh, yeah, Lauren. Um, so immediately, do it does, does, this, does this have to be a structure to it, or can I just talk for about you Lauren? Spitball. Just tell me about Lauren's life. Tell me what you know about Lauren. Yeah, um, so I know Lauren. Um, so the first thing Lauren and I bonded over, actually, was she told me that, um, as many of you are, which is funny, uh, big, or not big, but like, theater, theater aficionados. Uh, she immediately told me 
Uh, she had seen Wicked on Broadway. She loves the music in Wicked. Into the Woods is another of her favorite shows, um, which I was in in high school, by the way, if anyone was curious. Um, um, <laughs> thank you, Mackenzie. Um, yeah, Lauren um, has worked, well, she played college soccer four years. It was, I remember telling me how obviously crazy that life was. Um, she now works, I know she works at the school in some sort of like recreation coordinator uh, type of gig. I know she's done that in the past as well. Um, I know, I know Lauren uh, hosts, obviously has hosted uh, minis uh, before. Um, she's, I think currently, she's either hosting one now or like she hosted one or is podcasting about one now. She also is a patron of uh, Johnny Fairplay and she appears on there uh, as a guest sometimes. Um, yeah, um, she loves wearing that blue shirt and blue backwards hat. <laughs> so that's fact 12, if anyone's <laughs> uh, Yeah, um, and number 13, she is like my older sister that I don't have. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, Lily, uh, I told you from probably like final 13 or 12 or whenever it was, that I wanted to go to the end with you. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you now, even though you got one of my questions wrong during the uh, challenge. Um, just tell me about myself. Oh, Andrew. Okay, so you are originally from Maryland and you now live in New York. You work for a college as a, I wanna say lacrosse, is it lacrosse? No. Not right. lacrosse, but <laughs> it's rugby. <laughs> It's rugby. Okay. All right. All right. I'm confused. Rugby women's coach. You host trivia. You still host trivia even during COVID. Um, your family still lives in Maryland. Let's see. What else? I know. I feel like I know a bunch. You started orgs about a year ago. And when you started, you did one and then you got into like four at a time. And around this time last year, you watched a season of Survivor once one season a day I think and you were able to finish it what there's only 40 seasons so then 40 days um and I know you're about to turn 30 and you were gonna use the funds to have a nice night out um <laughs> but I know that can't happen anymore but maybe you can still come down to Maryland and see your family Bob King <laughs> um why do I want to say, I don't know if this is true, but why do I want to say you like worked at a radio station at one point? Because it's true. Yay. Okay. <laughs> I, I was not wrong. Yes. So we bonded over that as well. Um, yeah. And I just remember a lot of the stories that you told me of working with your students and trying to bond with them and being a good mentor. I know we talked about that a lot. So. Well, Alex and Lily, I, you guys both answered the questions perfectly. So I just want to let you guys know, wherever my vote goes, it is not a knock on the other person at all, at all. I, I think that, like I said, you guys both deserve to be here. I think that um, if you didn't have people's votes going in, I think you definitely put people at least on the fence. And that's just a testament to you guys' game. And, I, and I, I'm looking forward to knowing you guys in my real life afterwards. Um, jury and production, once again, I just want to thank you guys for entertaining me for the last few weeks uh it's been great and uh yeah we'll have um i think simmons and the only other, other person has to go and uh, i'm looking forward to it so thank you both thanks andrew appreciate it man mike simmons finish us out <laughs> so um hey sorry if i don't have anything prepared for for this question here um you know um you know it's tough sitting here and i'm and Andrew might've jumped the gun about anybody being a dick tonight, but you know, I'm the last guy. So maybe I'll, I'll wrap that up. Um, I don't know if I have much of a question, but I guess I made the wrong decision and not voting for Lily last round because I could have tied it up two to two and made Austin and Lily go to a, a challenge. And, you know, I probably should have. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I was stuck with Lily since day one and I thought we had a better relationship than, you know, it happens in the game where you get stabbed in the back. Um, and so, you know, I was hoping for maybe a little bit of uh, I scratch your back, you scratch mine. But, hey, that's how the game's played, right? Um, 
I guess not much of a question, maybe more of a comment. Both of you played the exact same damn game to me. I know it inside and out. You guys came to me and Greg and told us everything. So a lot of the stuff that I heard here was news to me because I don't know if you can claim a lot of those moves as your own. And I want to say that to everybody here. A lot of those moves you didn't make on your own. You had The reason you're here where you are now is because you played a numbers game. You didn't play an individual game where I'm making big moves to stab people in the back. It was a numbers game. Um, so I will say, you know, congratulations to getting here. You did a good job of forming an alliance from day one and, and using that alliance to get where you are now. Um, my vote tonight, honestly, is going to Alex, and I'm I'm sorry. Um, but I have no question. I just wanted to, wanted to say that. You know, it sucks. I, I spent all day preparing something to say to, to everybody here and didn't get to use it. And the one thing I was going to say was I hope you guys get to, to vote for me tonight, and I guess that was the case. So thank you. Would you have voted? Would you have kept yourself in her situation? Would you have kept you? Uh, I don't know. Hmm. I mean, would I have kept me? Yeah, over Alex. And, if you were in Lily's position. Would you have taken yourself over Alex? Probably not, no. Okay. But is is it fair to be upset about it? No. You won four no. individual immunities. It would be dumb. I would what? You won four individual immunities. It would be dumb. Right, but I said, is it okay to be upset about it? I wouldn't be. Okay. Well, that's why you got voted out five, five, you six people ago. You well, I appreciate it. But anyway, no hard feelings. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Simmons. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Alex and Lily, before we vote, I will give you both the chance to make a closing statement. <laughs> Alex, go ahead. First off, I want to echo what a couple other people have said. Appreciate the whole production team. This was I, I had no idea these things existed like two months ago. This was super dope. Getting like, I, I, I cherish every conversation I had with a friend who wondered what the hell I was doing in here every night. So I appreciate that. It was a lot of fun. Um, to the jury, uh, I want to echo Andrew again and say I, I appreciate your, your fair questions. I was a little, a tad worried about this turning into a slaughter fest. Um, I, I felt every question very fair justified and I appreciate you guys giving me the chance to uh, explain my game. Um, I don't feel I have any new game pundits to say um, that I haven't already. If I, I don't think I just used the word correctly. I'm sorry. Anyway, pundits. Um, but I, again, um, I respect your decision. You are nine, very, solid people good game players i know you're gonna make the decision you think's best uh i want to appreciate y'all for uh just playing with me it was a lot of fun much love lily um wow i really didn't prepare an ending speech um i again like i I guess thanks everyone for being here. I hope that I can show you guys that I did play a game. And I mean, I'll reiterate exactly what Simmons said. I did play a numbers game, but so did the three of us. And that's how we got to the end. And I did what I needed to do. And I've never tried to say I played a completely individual game. Um, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I just, I'm grateful to be here. I hope that I've proven that I tried to make the connections that I needed to get through the game. And I was always aware of what was going on, even though people didn't think I was aware. And that's how I got here today. So yeah, thanks to everyone. Again, no hard feelings, man, the best win man win. Um, so yeah, good luck tonight, everyone and Alex. Good luck, Billy. love you. Uh, I'm going to take a, a, a page out of Courtney Yates's book from um, Heroes vs. Villains. I'm going to go fist bump girl. We're going to vote for Lily. My vote is for Alex. Um, I felt going into tonight's final tribal that um, between himself and Lily, they both had similar games on paper and he did a much better job of succinctly and eloquently portraying his game and making known what moves he made, what he knew, what he was a part of. Um, personally, as for my jury question, basically he was the only one to answer it with, the, with a numerical answer. Lily essentially did exactly what I asked her not to and said, well, based off of how things are going, I really don't know. I said, you won't get my vote if you answer that way. So I'm sticking to that. 
She also made the last uh, minute comment, made the best man win. Let's hope that happens. Alex, you got my vote. I hope you get four more. Congrats. Coming into the night, I didn't think you were going to be able to get my vote, but you really impressed me tonight. And I definitely think you played the best game. My vote goes for Alex. Lily, love you so much. I really hope, oops, I really hope that this gets you a win. Um, I've just got so much respect for your game. It's the game I would have wanted to play. That said, Alex, you absolutely crushed it tonight, surpassed expectations, and made this a lot more complica complicated of a decision than I expected. All right, I'll go get the votes. Alex, Lily, Jury, thank you all for an incredible season of Survivor. When Morgan and I put this together, we envisioned a cast that truly showed up to play. I think I can speak for the both of us and for production when I say that you blew us out of the water. Hats off to each and every one of you. I know you would like me to read these votes tonight, and fortunately, in this game full of twists, here is the final one. Remember that tonight you want to see your name on the parchment. There are nine votes in the urn. It takes five to win. I will read the votes. First vote, Lily. Alex. It's one vote Lily, one vote Alex. Lily. Tied again. Two votes Lily, two votes Alex. Lily. Alex, three votes Lily, three votes Alex, three votes left. Lily. We're tied again. Four votes Lily, four votes Alex, one vote left. The winner of Survivor Exile Island Alex. Congrats, Alex. Good job, Alex. Good job, Alex. Congrats, Alex. Alex. Holy <laughs> wow. Thank you, guys. That's amazing. Thank you guys so much. Damn. Uh, <laughs> congratulations, Alex. You have won Survivor Exile Island, and you have earned a $120 paycheck, which is probably a dollar to the hour that you spent playing this game. <laughs> it's been awesome watching you guys play i know you guys all played with your whole heart and i really appreciate and respect that um it was an awesome final tribal council uh it everybody gave really great questions alex and lily you guys gave really great answers um it was exciting to watch it all unfold so thank you so much Thank you so much to Denny and Carrie McKenna and Alex and Jeremy for showing up and helping us put this on every night. Um, they're behind the scenes. They're our little green squares, but um, they're, they're what makes everything happen. So big shout out to them too. Show your face to damn it, the green squares. <laughs> there we go. Hi everyone. <laughs> That's, Hello. Uh, it, it's true that a cast makes the season, and I say that no matter what, but there wouldn't be episodes without the people in the green squares. So, you know, when the episodes come out, just remember those green squares. They, 
take time out of every evening to do. I was trying to count today. I think I counted 30 events they had to show up for, whether it was tribal or challenge. They showed up for, they showed up 30 times. They took uh, time out of their evening. So, you know, just, it's not just Morgan and I, it's, it's them as well. Morgan and I didn't hit the record button one time at tribal or challenges. It's always them. So, 